Vielen Dank. Um, ich freue mich hier zu sein. Leider ist mein Deutsch nicht so gut, dass ich heute auf Deutsch äh, reden kann. Deshalb werde ich äh, auf Englisch reden. So, Shadow Elites. Let me explain what I mean. So, this is Gerhard Schröder with his good friend Vladimir Putin. While Chancellor, he agreed to a pipeline deal with Gazprom that many Germans thought was in the nation's, was not in the nation's national interest, but it helped him to get a very highly paid position when he left Gazprom. And this is Richard Pearl, who more than any other one person is responsible for the United States launching its disastrous invasion of Iraq. And here on the right is Larry Summers, whose deregulatory policies led the global economy to the brink of disaster. What do the players in this family photo have in common? They represent today's new breed of power brokers. Their actions represent new means of wielding power and influence. We're in a new world, in a new era. In the old world, it was easier to see who was in charge and where the power lay. This is how power looked in the United States about 50 years ago as it was described by C. Wright Mills. We have the corporate, the political, and the military elites. At that time, government, companies, and pressure groups had more clearly defined roles. Today, there are all manner of consultancy, think tank, business, NGOs, and media organizations Players perform multiple roles across them, and sometimes it's difficult to tell where one organization begins and the other one ends. In the old world, it would have been unthinkable for the leader of one sovereign state to buy the leader of another, especially that of Germany, the world's third largest industrialized democracy. In the old world, it would have been unthinkable for prominent academics to engage in a stealth, a secret propaganda campaign on behalf of a terrorist sponsor and dictator and to get away with it. But Libya's outlaw image began improving in recent years in all probability because it hired the Monitor Group, powered by Harvard and, and Washington power brokers, for a quarter of a million dollars a month. In the old world, it would have been unthinkable for a military leader to circumvent the chain of command. But last summer, the top US war commander in Afghanistan used Rolling Stone magazine to complain about White House war policy. Months earlier, his deputy put out directives through a Washington think tank Again, apparently not through the chain of command. Today, think tanks act as news outlets and news outlets as entertainment companies and corporations, companies, daily stand in for government. Did you know that in the United States today, three quarters of people working for federal government are actually private contractors? Many carry out government functions, like running intelligence operations and doling out taxpayer dollars under stimulus and bailout plans. Today, a real question is, who is the government? Government meetings are called and only contractors are present in the room, and it leads one to wonder whether governing is always in the national or public interest. Blackwater of Iraq infamy not only renamed itself to XE, it split into shell, uh, multiple shell companies, so not even government officials to whom it reports necessarily know what they're dealing with 
or they can say they don't know. All this ambiguity leads players and organizations of all kinds and indispensable asset, deniability. Here's a power broker with multiple roles symbolized by multiple cards. So if questioned in his role as X, he can always say, well, you know, I was operating in my role as Y. The opportunity to intertwine state and private power is much greater. We are in a democracy and accountability challenged era, the era of shadow elites. Shadow elites are the top power brokers in a new system of power and influence that debuted over the past few decades. And if we don't understand this new system, how can we navigate it? How can we have input into the policies that affect our finances, our security, and the wars that are fought in our names? Let alone even know what these new players are up to or whose expert opinions we can trust when we tune into CNN. Now, a new system of shadow, a new system of power and influence. How did we get to this point? Well, there are four transformational developments that have led to this new system that came about over the past few decades. The first is the privatization and redesign of governing that gained impetus in the Reagan and the Thatcher eras of the 1980s, the contractors carrying out government functions in the United States is an extreme case of that, but it's happening everywhere in the world, or, or almost everywhere. Anyway, it's a product of this long process. The second transformational development is the end of the Cold War. The diffusion of authority the end of the Cold War brought about created new opportunities for private players, private in quotes, players, often working on behalf of governments, or it wasn't clear whom, to play new roles in decisions, in policies that directly affect the public. The third transformation de transformational development is new information technologies. They have enabled everything from instant global financial transactions beyond accountability to changes in the structure of the media. Let me say just a few words about changes in the structure of the media because this, this is extremely important. The old media, newspapers, cable, broadcast television are struggling merely to survive. Here's Bob Woodward and Richard Bernstein investigating the Watergate scandal that brought down President Richard Nixon. Would that story have come out in today's mainstream media? Reporters and investigative reporting have been slammed by the emergence of cheap digital content enabled by new information technologies and fur further gutted by the financial crisis. As a former senior producer for CNN told me, you know, it's far less expensive to fill time and cover stories by booking expert talking heads than it is to send a reporter and a crew to investigate and try to report a story accurately and objectively. The problem, of course, is that many of the experts we see on TV are shadow elites. They have an agenda or in a string of affiliations that compromise their objectivity. Now, there's an inescapable irony to this. The digital era has unleashed a flood of so-called information. And we're told that this seeming availability of data will somehow provide the transparency needed to out these players. But the internet's demise, the internet's rise, rather, has decimated the very journalists needed to connect the dots. And the journalists who remain often are embedded with or culturally similar to the people that they cover. This is a shot from um, the White House correspondence, um, journalist correspondence dinner from just, just a few weeks ago. Now, what about new media? Shadow elites have been quick to exploit new media. Many brand themselves day to day on politically polarized blogs and even hour to hour on Twitter and Facebook. How many of you 
tweet? Just one or two, gosh. Well, you have to get with the times. I've been told that I need to tweet if I want to sell my next book. So I'm now tweeting. Um, so they sell themselves on Twitter and Facebook. They attract like-minded members of the public who have descended into their own compartmentalized reality co cocoons where opposing viewpoints are increasingly screened out. New information technologies have made possible yet another transformational development, the embrace of what we call um, truthiness, truthiness, which means that something doesn't actually have to be true, but it's the appearance of truth that matters, hence the term truthiness. It's the appearance of truth that matters. So what's the importance of truthiness? Truthiness enables people to play with their appearances regardless of fact or track record. Shadow elites have very skillfully exploited this culture of truthiness, which is enabled by a dizzying array of new platforms to sell their version of reality. As a result of these four transformational developments, the power brokers themselves, the shadow elites, are the pillars of power. Their influence, unlike in the past, their influence resides not so much in the organizations, but in the networks that operate in and around the organizations. Do you get that? Because that's a major point. They're, they're, their influence is not so much in these organizations, but it's in and around them, and they're connecting the dots via their closed, their semi-closed networks. Their ability comes from their, from their power comes from their ability to blend and blur official and private boundaries. But here's the clincher. The very pillars of modern democratic states have been separation of powers and clear boundaries. Shadow elites challenge both the rules of the state, of governments, those would be the rules of accountability, and the rules of the free market, those would be the rules of competition. They're not interested in accountability or in free market competition. And these very specific modes of operating and networks are merging in elite networks around the world. Wherever I talk about this subject, people always chime up and offer examples, additional examples of players and networks that, that fit the model of shadow elites. So I look forward to hearing what you have to say about this.